Thank you so much, uh, Dakoti uh, Kofa Soya, for coming to KDR TV and the Africa Paper. It's nice having you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we are doing the second interview for the KDR uh, uh, TV. KDR TV and the Africa paper. This is the second part of what we discussed earlier on, the other interview. Mm -hmm. So this time we are focusing on what the U.S. government is doing here. Mm -hmm. we, we understand you received this letter, which was written by the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Sylvia yeah. Bonewell. Mm -hmm. um, she was explaining here that what the U.S. government is doing and how uh, far they are re really taking this Ebola issue is very seriously oh, yeah. and at the same time even though this is a country the US with all the resources with the Center for Disease Control mm -hmm. but at the same time they are learning the issue why did it take Africa so long to learn about Ebola and to see how they can prevent its spread I have no idea why it took Africa so long mm -hmm. um, I mean even here in, in a um, um, in the nations such as the, the U.S., mm -hmm. we're still learning a lot about Ebola. So, you know, education is key. So the, the Africans, they're learning. Um, our people in Africa, you know, they're learning. They're continuing to learn. But there are a lot of cultural practices, too, and, and beliefs and, and things like that um, that comes into play mm -hmm. when it comes to the virus. One of the main things is that, you know, um, death is huge in our culture, and the, the mm -hmm. process of burial um, it's, it's huge and, and to not be able to bury your loved one um, it's almost like it's an, it's an abomination and, and so the people were dealing with that piece wanting to go and get the bodies and give their loved ones a proper burial so you know we're talking about those cultural um, practices I mean the whole process of grieving you know the burial process in, in a lot of West African nations I know in Liberia and it it takes like a whole weekend um, of of ceremonies, you know, in burying your loved one, and and it's huge. It, it's something that's that's honored, and so that piece of it, you know, that cultural practice, um, sort of got in the way, mm -hmm. and 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 helped spread the virus. Because when you mm -hmm. go to to mm -hmm. get the body, mm -hmm. not really realizing the the severity of the issue, mm -hmm. um, now you've contracted it, and then you're spreading it, and then when people come to those. Mm -hmm burial mm -hmm. um, ceremonies mm -hmm. it's been spread so you know it's things like that some of the cultural practices um, was was a bump in the road mm -hmm. um, there but I'm glad that people are more aware and, and are more um, knowledgeable now about mm -hmm. the severity of the issue and and are um, dealing with that loss mm -hmm. okay. and accepting the fact that they may not be able, they will not be able to bury um, they are lost when they go through that process. Yeah. You, you touch on the severity of the problem that Ebola is creating in West Africa and now to other parts of the world. Yeah. Uh, look at Sierra Leone from today, starting this Friday. The country of a population of about 6 million people is on lockdown. Hmm. And the government is sending medical officials to make sure that they test the temperature of resident people are grounded in their homes. Yeah. This shows how Ebola wow. uh, is really threatening the whole country and its economy. Yeah. And Liberia also recently had it's, this. Yeah. You know. So yeah. in as much as they are trying to contain it, but what does this tell? Hmm. It's, it's serious. Um, it's a serious, serious issue. I mean, the governments now are really cracking down um, on this and, and trying to contain it. Um, we have to be careful to it and know that these are people that we're dealing with and not mm -hmm. just only look at the virus because then we tend to disconnect ourselves from the human factor of it. Mm -hmm. So as we're putting people in lockdown and containment, which is necessary, let's treat them with compassion. Um, food now is a big issue. Yeah. So as people are in lockdown and being advised to stay home, um, what are we doing? What is the government doing mm -hmm. to make sure that these people are fed? Because now they can't go to the marketplace mm -hmm. to buy food, right? So is their procedure, are there things in place for that? Because then if, if Ebola doesn't kill you, hunger will. 
right? Yeah. So what's being done mm -hmm. to help rectify some of those things mm -hmm. is my concern. Mm -hmm. But it's a big problem. Yeah, the other major source of concern is another neighboring country in West Africa, which is a um, neighbor to Sierra Leone and mm -hmm. Liberia, mm -hmm. that is Guinea. Mm -hmm. In some part of the country, now they are chasing out government officials, mm -hmm. attacking the media, attacking uh, even uh, health workers, helping them. Mm -hmm. uh, think about seven people who have been killed in that country, mm -hmm. being attacked. Wow. So, does this actually bring fear to health workers, to government officials, and of course the media that is trying to yeah. cover this and bring it to the light, yeah. you know, bring it to the world attention, yeah. trying to get these stories out where yeah. people have been attacked, being killed, yeah. chased out? Yeah, well, naturally that would bring fear to the people who are trying to help. Mm -hmm. um, let's also understand that those people who are doing the attacking, they're mm -hmm. also afraid. They're afraid, too. Um, so I can see it both sides. And it's, it is unacceptable. Violence mm -hmm. during this time is, is unacceptable. And I denounce mm -hmm. any violence. And we all should. Mm -hmm. and, and so what can we do about that? Because mm -hmm. um, when people are very afraid, sometimes they may get violent. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and, and so fear, too, comes with, with lack of, of, of awareness. You know, so that's why the education piece is huge in this fight against Ebola. We have to educate our people, educate our communities mm -hmm. um, in, 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 in how they can protect themselves, um, the do's and the don'ts mm -hmm. and things like that. And, mm -hmm. and, and plead with our people. I plead with, with the people in Africa, with the citizens in Guinea and Liberia and Sierra Leone. Um, let's not fight um, the people that are coming to help us. They're, they're there to help. They're there to help. We need all the help we can get. And I get that you're afraid and probably confused. And I know there's a lot of disbelief still. Um, there are some people that are saying the international government is over, the international leaders, um, and even local leaders are overreacting. No one's overreacting about Ebola. I think we're underreacting. It's a deathly, mm -hmm. deathly virus. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's deadly. I mean, mm. it's a deadly, deadly virus. Yeah. And, and so, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. If I'm coming to help you and you're fighting back mm. and, 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 and killing and, and things like that, that's bad. That's mm. not good. And, and that would make me afraid. It would make yeah. anyone afraid. Mm. But I also get that there's fear, too, on the other end. Yeah. So what can we do? Yeah, because I, I can see from this letter that you received, even mm -hmm. though the U.S. have all the facilities, the medical staff, the technology, the money, the resources, mm -hmm. but yet still uh, the, the Secretary of Health and Human Services said here mm -hmm. in this letter that they are still learning yep. about Ebola. Yeah. So, uh, why is uh, why is it a problem that people are not being educated there, even though the the disease is killing people gradually? Yeah. What, how is the Kofa Foundation going to focus on things like this? Because you are talking yeah. about sending aids to Africa, sending aids, you know, trying to mobilize people to help mm -hmm. if these things are happening. Yeah, we spoke with. I had a meeting yesterday with one of our partner organizations, um, mm -hmm. Matter. Um, and I met with um, a young woman, Katie Redden, Redden at Matter. She, and we talked about exactly that. Mm -hmm. So as we're sending food and medical supplies to Liberia and, and other places, um, especially the food piece, um, and also included in that would be educational materials. So as mm -hmm. you're getting food, mm -hmm. you're also getting a pamphlet that would help educate you mm -hmm. and, and provide you with more awareness and more knowledge mm -hmm. about the, the disease okay. right, and how you can better mm -hmm. protect yourself. So that's a little piece. And, and that can go a long way um, in, in, in the fight against Ebola. So mm -hmm. those are some of the strategies we're looking at okay. implementing. If, yeah. if you are just joining us, this is KDR TV and the Africa Paper Broadcasting Live from Minnesota. Uh, we are based here in Shakopee and also in Brooklyn Center. Uh, Dakoti, we have been talking about all of this happening in, in West Africa with the Ebola. Is there anything else that you think in this interview we did not ask or we have forgotten that you want to let our listeners and viewers know about Ebola and mm -hmm. its impact? Hmm.
the one thing that I want to continue to to voice out, and it's one that I've been advocating for from day one, is that it's going to take a collaborative effort of all of us working together to beat this virus, to beat this disease. So it's going to take a collaborative effort. It's going to take all of us um, to coming together to fight this, and each and every one of us doing our parts. Um, so that's, you know, that's going to be key. Education, I can't stress the education and awareness piece enough. Um, so I want to thank just everyone who's watching. And I want to thank all of our partners and, 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 and well-wishers. I want to thank the leaders of the world. I want to thank President Obama and, 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 and the President of Ghana mm -hmm. and other presidents and leaders who have stepped up um, against this fight. You know, I know I mentioned um, the U.K., you know, helping tremendously, and, and China. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a global, mm -hmm. it's been a global effort, yeah. and I want to recognize that and, and continue to advocate for that united effort. Um, and for us Africans um, to take the full front in this fight, because we're the ones that are right now directly impacted. And so as we're reaching out to the world to come and help so that this doesn't spread out more, we need to step up in this effort and take the full front in the fight against Ebola. And I believe that encourages the rest of um, the world to join us in this fight. Is this a serious battle? And it's gonna take all of our efforts um, to fight it, to beat it, and to win. Ebola will be eradicated from Africa. On that note, we thank you so much for joining us. This is KDL TV and the Africa Paper reporting live from Minnesota and here in Shakopee, and we are also based in Brooklyn Center. We thank our viewers. Thank you so much, Dr. T, for talking with us, and we look forward to more interviews. Thank you, and God bless you. You're welcome. Thank you.